Hello there my crafty friend, thanks so much for stopping by. So I've been thinking about getting a Cricut machine for a while now. Uh, a really good friend of mine has got one, she loves hers and she makes some amazing things with it. But whenever I start to look into them, uh, I, 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 I feel a little bit, uh, I feel a little bit overwhelmed. They all do different things and they've got all of these different features and I start to feel a little bit intimidated, so I haven't done anything about it. Recently, Cricut reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try the Cricut Joy. So I looked into it a little more and discovered that the Cricut Joy is a smaller, lighter, cuter, uh, more like a simplified, pared down version of some of the bigger machines. Now this is exactly what I need. So as a total beginner to the Cricut universe, today we are going to open this cute thing. We're going to have a look at what it can do and we're going to make some very easy beginner friendly projects. Let's get to it. So the Cricut Joy is the baby of the Cricut family, but don't let its cute exterior fool you. And it is just so adorable. Oh, I love this color. It has all the accuracy and cutting speed of its bigger siblings. It can write and draw as well. It can cut over 50 different materials, but it is small, it's compact, and it only weighs around 1.8 kilos. That's like four pounds. It doesn't have any buttons at all, so it runs entirely wirelessly from your gadget using the Cricut program called Design Space. And so in here, oh, fantastic. Super simple uh, instructions to get going. I'm going to follow these step by step. Uh, a little sample of some cardstock to make your first project and a little sample of some silver uh, smart vinyl and your mat. So I'm going to go ahead and follow this link here and download the Design Space program onto my laptop. You can use Design Space on any of your gadgets, your iPad or your phone, PC or Mac, but I'm going to go ahead and set it up on my laptop. Just because I'm a total beginner, I really want to be able to see it clearly with the bigger screen and often things have a little bit more functionality if they're working on a, you know, on a full scale computer. I'm sure once I'm a pro at this, I'll be able to whip up designs from my phone, but just to begin with, I really want the bigger screen and the functions of my laptop. So the first project I wanted to make was, um, was a, is a gift for uh, my girl's scout leader. Um, she's just been so wonderful. She's such a lovely lady. And as a thank you present, I thought I might make her like a little travel cup. And my plan is to, um, to do like a little, a little name here on it with Bagheera and, uh, and maybe like a little picture of a panther or, or something like that. So let's hop onto the design space and, uh, and see if we can design something cute for that. Okay, so I have gone ahead and downloaded the design space onto my laptop and here we are. So I, uh, the first time you go into it, it gets you to set up an account and I have done that, which is why you can see my name has been added to the greeting here. And so the first thing uh, that we are going to do over here on the right, I am going to select that I have a Cricut Joy because I only really want to see projects and fonts and design elements that are compatible with the joy, the one that I have. The first time you go into this, over here in the menu, um, you can do this new product setup, which is a great little tutorial that takes you through plugging in your, your Cricut for the first time, connecting it to your, to your gadget, and it gets you to do a little test cut, which is like a little training exercise, just so that you get, a, get an idea of, of, how the, of how it flows. Now, I really recommend that you have a browse through this website. There are so many ideas and there are so many projects here to inspire you. If you're not sure exactly what you would create or exactly what you want to do, like say you want to do some Easter crafts, but you're not sure exactly what you would do, there, there, are just, there is so much inspiration here that it is just amazing. Oh my gosh, look at this axolotl holder. <gasps> 
So there are some free fonts and design elements, but subscribing to Cricut Access gives you the full library of, of, all, of everything, of, um, of all of the fonts, all of the designs, all of the elements and images, the full works. And so as you scroll down, you will notice that there are some designs that are free and some that if they've got this little A uh, flag here, it means that this, that this project uses uh, uses elements and designs that, that come with the Cricut Access subscription. All of the things that I create today, I'll be putting the design up um, as a public design. So if there's anything that you'd like um, that you like that I do today and you would like to give it a go it is available here for you to um, to use the design I'll put the link to all of my um, all of my designs in the video description today so let's get going making this mug for Bagheera I am going to go up here to a new project and here we have a brand new canvas design this is where we put all of our elements let's add an image and I want to add an image of a panther. So Bagheera was named after the the panther character from the Jungle Book series so I thought I would do a little image of a panther in her design. Oh there's some good ones. Oh wow some are really elaborate some are a little bit more simple. I like this one. So I'm going to highlight it and down here add to my canvas and here it is so now when you're looking at your canvas each one of these little squares represents one centimeter so you can accurately get your design to fit into the exact space of your object that you want to uh, to put it on but just for ease of use right now I'm going to make it big just so that I can see it really well and then I can resize it when I'm ready to send it to be cut. So you can see here over here I've got a little exclamation mark and it's telling me that this is too big for a Cricut Joy. That's okay I can ignore that for now I will make it smaller and the right size when it comes to it. So what I was thinking of doing is putting like a gap in here where I put the name Bagheera like splitting this image in two with her name down the middle. I'm going to add a square and the square will be cut out to create that gap. So when you add a square if you grab a corner and drag it it will keep the correct ratio of the shape. If I grab the side edge I can drag that out and make it the shape I want something like that so now I have two elements that I've added to my design I have the square here and I have the panther here and what I want to do next is I want to select both of these things so to select them both I can either highlight one hold down shift and then highlight the other so they are both in the aqua highlight now another way is just to click and drag over the entire design and they are both highlighted so once they are both selected, I'm going to come down here and hit slice. Slice is like a, a cookie cutter action. It is going to take a blade and any elements at all that are overlapping will be sliced straight through along the edges. So I'm going to click slice. Now it shows you the line of everything that has been sliced. So what that has done, instead of having just two elements now, I've actually got quite a few more. I can take these and move them around and see what we've got. All of these different little pieces as well as my background panther. So I don't need this pit. I can highlight it and put it into the bin along with this bit. I don't need this bit either. All I want is my panther with his gap down the middle. Now let's add some text. I want something I want something, um, if I grab the crosshairs in the middle, I can move it to where I want. Double click to highlight. Pop it kind of in the middle. And now let's have a play around with what we want. I want something quite bold that is just really easy to read. I'm quite new at this. I'm not very confident with choosing a font that has a lot of decorative features in it. I'm just going to type in the keyword bold and see what we get. What does that one look like? Mm, let's have a look at that. 
Yeah, that might work. Headline news. Yeah, look, that's the kind of look that I'm looking for. Just something quite simple. Sometimes when you've got overlapping elements like this, it can be hard to click on the one you want because it thinks you want the background one. If you ever have that trouble, you can always just click on it here in your side panel. Now, you know what I would like to do is maybe add uh, a line at the top and the bottom just to give some separation. Let's do that. So to add the lines above and below, I'm going to add a square. I want it to be quite skinny. Let's say something like that. I want it to be black so it matches and I want to make it a little bit longer. Okay, now I want two of those. So I'm going to highlight it and this little icon here, it will duplicate it. Grab the crosshairs and move it around. That looks better. I really like that. I'm also going to select the Bagheera text and just oh, undo just Bagheera text and fuss around with that. I think I could make it a little bit bigger. I can click and drag a corner or I can go up and down with the font size here. Grab the crosshairs in the middle. Okay, I fussed around with that spacing a little bit more and I'm liking how that looks. I think that looks okay. All right, now you can tell we have got four different elements here. Okay, our two lines, our Bagheera text and our sliced panther in the background. I don't want to send it to the cutter with four different elements. I want this to be one. So they are locked together, they are totally merged and, uh, and I'm not going to have any different problems with different layers or different elements being separated separated. So I'm going to select them all, go down here to combine and I want to weld them together. They are now one layer. And so looking at my mug I want to do it here on the side. So I guess I want my design to be around around six or seven centimeters wide, hmm, probably around five to six centimeters tall. It tells me here that it is 10 centimeters wide. That's still too big, still too big. Let's go with seven, seven by five. I think that will work well. I really like that. I'm really happy with that. Let's save it before anything happens. I will call it Bagheera's mug. I'm going to go over here and hit make it. If I wanted this cut with regular vinyl, I would need to choose to put it on the mat. The green mat that comes with your Cricut, you would apply the vinyl to it and it's like a sticky level and it holds it in place while it does the cutting. I'm going to be using this Cricut Smart Vinyl and when you take it out of the box, it already has this really substantial backing plastic to it. So that holds it in place while it does the cutting so that there is no need to mount it onto the mat, the cutting mat. So I will choose that I am using Cricut Smart. Yes, I only want one copy cut. It is a basic cut without a mat and it's saying based on this I need to have a material that is at least 10 centimeters long. I will go continue. It is looking for my joy, which has been connected already by Bluetooth. And it wants me to choose exactly which smart material I have got. It's quite important to choose the right one. I will go browse all because this is where it, this is how the Cricut knows how deep to cut. And I am using the smart vinyl with a holographic pattern. That's it. Okay, load my material it's telling me. It's checking that it's got enough. Click go. Click unload and now I can slide that out. Oh, that's so exciting. Mm, okay, can you see? See those tiny, very fine cut lines there? I'm going to cut this 
this design off just to make it a little bit more easier to manage. So what I'm going to do now is remove all these sections of vinyl that aren't part of my image. The background of the cut and all the little open spaces in between the lettering and the design. Now I'm just going to go careful just to make sure nothing I really want comes away as well. Now this part is the part I've been looking forward to. This is called weeding and this is where using the little Cricut tool got a little pointy end on it, comes in the Cricut Toolkit. We pick away at the little parts, the little tidy sections that aren't part of our design. So the little open areas of the, of the letters and any parts that need to be removed. Love it, love it. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, now it's looking good, but how on earth do we get our design perfectly spaced from here onto our mug. So that is where the Cricut transfer tape comes in. This is a clear film that is designed to pick up your design, keeping it perfect and transferring it onto your project. I'm going to cut off just enough to cover my image. I'm giving it a little rub down using the, the Cricut tool. This comes in the Cricut toolkit. I'm just going to give my mug a little wipe down with some rubbing alcohol, just because I've been touching it and carrying it around. And I want to make sure I get a really good, a really good stick. Now I've got guide, some little grid lines on my transfer tape to help me line it up nice and straight. Now I want this vinyl to really stick well. Okay, I'm going to give it a good rub with my with my little transfer tool, particularly working on those little ends of those fine letters and fine lines. Oh my goodness! It has worked! Oh, that is so great! I really love how this holographic vinyl looks on this um, the dark stainless steel. I wasn't sure if this would show up very well, if maybe there wasn't enough contrast, but I'm really happy with it. The sparkle is just so high that it looks great. The lettering is nice and clear. Even the tiniest, tiniest little bits of those uh, of the whiskers and the eye have been cut with absolute precision. The finest little point is in there. Oh, I love it. Love, love, love. That is fantastic. I noticed in the design space they had a panther footprint. I think I might add some footprints around the rest of the mug. I'll do that later. Um, let's move on to my next project I want to show you. So if you've uh, been around my channel at all, you would know how much I love my art journaling and my five-year Hobonichi journal. So what I wanted to do next is I wanted to create some art stencils with some designs in it that I could apply paint or ink uh, or watercolours over the top and make a pattern stencil onto my, my paper in my journals. So this is my five year and in this one I, you know, I often do some writing on the left and then I do some, some art here on the right hand side. So I wanted uh, like a stencil probably around 10 by 10 centimeters with some beautiful patterns that I could do some uh, some some stenciling here in my journal and you know write a little passage or uh, a, a quote in the middle of and I'd, I'd love to have a little collection of patterns that I could regularly use in my journal so having a browse around the design space oh there are so many really really lovely patterns that I could turn into stencils oh gosh I think they're really really cute but I love the look of this knit one and it's just the perfect time of year. I think this would be a gorgeous stencil. So I'm going to add that to canvas. I'm going to make it a little bit, a little bit chunkier by adding it a bit wider. And now I would like to crop it. Now there is probably a better way to crop this image, but because I don't know it, I am going to crop it the only way I know how. If you if if you're an expert at uh, at this kind of thing, don't laugh at me. There we go. There 
see, it's going to be, I'd like it to be around nine, something like that. Okay, now there is a dedicated stencil material that you can get for the Joy, but it's just, it's got a sticky back on it. So it's really more designed for if you want to stencil on tiles or a mat or clothing where you really want the stencil to be strongly adhered to your foundation piece. Uh, however, with me, uh, I want to be able to use this kind of stencil in my journal, uh, so I don't want it to be sticky. So I'm just going to make the stencil out of cardstock uh, so that I can reuse it over and over again. Right. Up here, I am going to click Make It. Now, this time I'm not using a smart material. I am going to be using something on a mat. And my mat size is the, this smaller one that came with the Joy. And it is letting me know that I need to place my cardboard on here. So I'm going to put my cardboard on the mat. Now it is strongly stuck here. It won't lift off and it can go through the cutter. Click continue. Now this time I am using medium cardstock. And away we go. I think that has worked really good. Oh wow. <laughs> that is so cool. That is exactly what I was hoping for. So it has done a really great job of cutting. I mean that is so fine and detailed. I'm I'm really very amazed. I think it's incredible. There are only a few little spots that um that I need to lift out. Okay, now let's give this a go. Fantastic! Oh, I love it. I love it. I think that's great. And you could keep going. You could do so many different designs, uh, you know, for, for autumn or for winter. You could do snowflake designs or leaf designs. You could add a background wash before you did that. And then you could do this in white uh, acrylic over the top of your background color. You could build up layers and layers. You could add little highlights of gold paint or white pen. My goodness, I'm going to have fun with this. For my last project, what I wanted to do was customize some little neck lanyards for my girls. Uh, both of my girls are in scouts and they, they love their, their scout activities. And when they're on camps, they have these little kind of like little pen torches um, and they've, they've misplaced them a few times. And so I thought it might be really cute to customize some little lanyards with their name along here so that they could use those to hang their torches off. So for this project I have got some adorable smart iron-on. So I have got one in like this opalescent glitter which will look really pretty and one in like a uh, it's like a shimmery hollow. So where the last ones we rubbed it onto our foundation with this one we're going to be ironing it on and to do that I've got the the Cricut mini heat press iron. It has uh, like a little Teflon base, little heat proof base so you can use it on your desk without having to uh, you know pull out your big ironing board and I've got the Cricut uh, little heat proof mat uh, for that as well. So back over here in design space, I have created the two names I want just by um, creating two little text boxes like that. And I've popped them over here on the right hand side. Um, I just find when you're doing words or just text like this, it can be handy to have them on the right hand side so that you can kind of jump through different font options. You can have a look at these and you can see exactly in real time what they look like there uh, without, um, without them being hidden underneath uh, the, 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 the font drop down. Now I just need to work out how big I want them. So the fonts need to be no wider than two centimeters. And I don't really mind how long they are, as long as they're less than two centimeters tall. Let's go about one, 
1.7 for a little bit of a uh, little bit of wiggle room there about 1.7 centimeters tall as well yeah, I'm gonna pop one underneath make them different colors it will know that um, it will let me know that I need to change because the colors are different so now because these are both smart materials I don't need to use the mat they have a very uh, like a a very stiff substantial kind of backing to them so they can go straight into your Cricut Joy without uh, using the mat board. So over here I'm going to click make it. I have a smart material. All the other vinyls and cardstock go into the Joy with the right side up. Like the pattern as you see it is right side up. The iron-on materials are different. They go into the Joy with the right side or the image side face down. So you need to flip it to cut it. And it, it tells you here in design space, turn on mirror for iron on projects. So I'm doing an iron on project. So I need to hit mirror here and it has automatically flipped my text around here. I'm going to hit continue. It is an iron on smart iron on. And this one is the holographic. Okay, so now because I've chosen an iron on, it has already reminded me. So you don't need to remember this on your own. It will tell you here. Make sure you've turned on the mirror function and place it into your machine with the shiny side down. Okay, that one is done. Click unload and it ejects it. And now it's ready for cut two. But it has cut it in reverse and the same with this one now there's one more thing we need to do before we iron we need some details about exactly how to iron this stuff on so in Safari I'm just going to Google the Cricut heat guide and it's taken me to the right place in the website to get exactly how long and how hot to iron these little things on I am using the Easy Press Mini. I am ironing a smart iron on holographic first. The material is, these would just be polyester and hit apply. What do I need to do? Medium heat for 30 seconds. Keep the movement going, firm pressure. Flip it for another 15 seconds. So depending on the type of iron on material you're using and depending on what your your item that you're applying it to is made out of means that you can get a whole lot of different settings here sometimes it might tell you to remove the liner when it's cool like I've been told sometimes it might say it's better to remove the um, the backing liner while your item is still warm so I'm going to follow this exactly so my little iron has three settings that you just operate by pressing the little button off low medium and high so I'm going to set it to medium and just let it heat up at the moment the little lights are orange so that lets me know that that is still heating they will turn green once it's done and ready to go so while my iron is heating up I am going to weed my little designs I'm just going to remove the backing paper really carefully with the glitter one it's a little bit harder to see the cuts pulling carefully not much to remove with this one oh it made a beep I think it's ready okay constant movement 30 seconds I'm gonna set the little timer on my phone just to make sure I get it right and do 15 seconds on the other side so it's still hot at the moment, so I'm just going to let that cool before I peel it away. And now for the next one. Okay, this one is now cool to the touch. Let's peel it back slowly. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, that looks fantastic. love that I think they look fantastic I think they look great so 
Thanks so much for coming with me today and having a play with this thing. Uh, it's, um, it, it's really quite an impressive little machine. My brain is exploding with ideas of what this little thing can do. Every project that I've made today, my brain is thinking I could, I could do this with it and then I could do that with it. When I'm ironing, uh, when I'm ironing these lanyards, I'm thinking I could be making really cute little saying t-shirts for my kids. I could be ironing designs onto canvas shoes. It's, it's my, there are so many, there are so many ideas I'm going to have to write them all down. So today it really was uh, from the point of view of a total beginner. If you have any experience with design space you may have laughed with me at my simplicity uh, and um, I'm sure there is a bit of a learning curve as I do some more complex uh, designs and projects but uh, today I've kind of kept it simple because that's where that's where I've started from. But I don't want to give the idea to you that the Cricut Joy is only for beginners. I could really see that this machine would also be useful for people who are, are, are very experienced and know what they're doing with some of the bigger machines. I think the portability of this of this um, of the joy it is just so light it would be so easy to take to work uh, or to your church or to scouts or to over to your friend's house to um, to do to do projects together or to do a whole lot of organization labeling at work I could see how the joy um, separates itself from some of the other uh, machines uh, just with that that uniqueness of portability and how light it is and how easy it is to take around so it really I don't think that it is a machine just for beginners. I can really see that it is a very creative and powerful machine all on its own, just in a little bitty cute design. So a huge thank you to Cricut for sending this little joy over to me. I am going to have hours of fun with this. I have got more ideas than I know what to do with. All of these projects that I made in Design Space, I'll put links to them in the description below. And if you have got any questions at all, chat with me in the comments. I would love to hear from other people about their, uh, some of the projects that they've made uh, with the Cricut Joy or tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you've made. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.